In this video, I'll be covering the eight key new features that got released with Marvelous Designer 10. I'll be going over these new features, but also talking about some issues that I've encountered with this release as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Marvelous Designer 10 has now included Substance integration, so that means that any SPSAR files can be used directly within the program. So if you've created your own, maybe with Substance Designer, as long as you save it as SPSAR, Marvelous Designer will be able to read it. So let me show you how to set this up. So if we go back to Marvelous Designer 10, on the left hand side over here, you'll see that there's a library option. So if I click on that, it's going to bring up the library. Now you guys won't see a folder like this. And that's because we need to manually create this folder. So you can create it on your hard drive or wherever you want it to be. In this case, I'm going to create it on my desktop. So just create a folder, call it Substance MD. And this is where you'll be saving your SBSAR files. So now if I head back to Substance Source, and I sign in, you'll see that they actually do have a free category. So you can go ahead, download any of these materials, just click on the download icon and it's going to download an SPSAR file for you. Now just go ahead and place an SPSAR file in that folder. And when we go back to Marvelous Designer, click on this plus icon and now just go ahead and actually find your folder that you created and you'll click on select folder. And now when you double click on here, it's going to take you into the folder and you should see your SBSAR files. So you can see when I hover over these icons, it basically shows me which material I'm going to be using. So the easiest way to load these materials into the fabric layer section over here is just to double click on it. So as soon as I double click on my SBSAR, you can see it's been added to the object browser. So now in this case, if I want this material on the sleeves, I just need to select these sleeves and then go down to my fabric over here and make sure I'm selecting fabric three. And there we go, I've got the SPSAR file on my character. Now a new feature that's been added in MD10 as well is this icon over here, which is the quality render, which is a 3D window. And you can see it makes the overall uh, representation of the garment look a lot better. We've got this ambient occlusion shadows on the garment as well, and a better visual representation of what the material looks like. So now if I go ahead and select Fabric 3, one of the uh, things to take notice of, under Material, you can see this says Substance. With a default fabric, it's usually on PBR, but there is a Substance option is uh, a substance option here as well. And since we loaded in a Substance material, it automatically put it on Substance. So over here, depending on how these SPSAR files have been created, they have their own custom properties. And over here, we can choose to repeat this pattern or use unified map. So unified map also works in conjunction with our UV map. So if I go to the UV editor, just right click over here and reset UV to 2D arrangement. So if I place this, like if I'm creating UDMs and I place this into its own tile and scale this up, you can see depending on the texel density, uh, it will change how this pattern is laid out on this particular sleeve. So that's really nice that you have that option. Uh, to change it from unified or repeat, it depends what you want to use. You can also change the presets here. Now this is for the individual SPSAR. You can see this one's got its own individual presets for selecting beading or golden beading, uh, which is really cool. And you can change the resolution over here. You can even go all the way up to 4K. And this reflection parameter acts as a roughness slider. So by decreasing this value, it re removes some of the shininess on the material and you can see there's a whole lot of custom properties over here from fabric metallicness, beads, color, like you can do so much cool stuff with some of these uh, SBSAR files. They've added a lot of uh, customization uh, to them on substance source. So this is fantastic, in, uh, especially if you plan on using some of these substance uh, source materials and you want to visualize them directly in Marvelous Designer. Okay, yeah, so it's that easy to set up. And just remember, whenever you add new SPSA fi uh, files into your folder, you can just click on this icon to refresh it so that the new ones show up. But there we go. Substance has now been integrated directly into Marvelous Designer. And I think this is a fantastic inclusion. So one of the new features that they've added to Marvelous Designer 10 is the wrinkle and release brushes. So I've created a basic t-shirt over here and this is a feature you'd want to use at the end of your project. So you're done with your simulation but maybe you feel like there's maybe too many wrinkles on your garment or you want to add some additional wrinkles, you'll be able to do that. So, so, so programs like Blender and ZBrush have included these fantastic uh, dynamic fabric brushes and our Marvelous Designer has decided to include their own. So to access that you want to click on this drop down arrow and head on over to Sculpt. 
Once you're in the sculpting workspace, if your garment looks super shiny like this, you just want to increase the roughness value. So here are the two new brushes. We've got wrinkle and we've got release. So wrinkle adds additional wrinkles and release will basically remove the wrinkles on your garment. So let's actually start with release. So let's say I'm done with my garment, but I feel like there's maybe too many wrinkles and folds over here on this part of the garment. I'll be able to remove that. So on the right hand side, you can see we've got simulation presets as well. If you've got a nice fast GPU, you can actually select GPU and this process is going to be a lot faster. And then we've got the overall size, which is obviously controlling the size uh, of the affected region on our garment. And we have a smaller red circle as well, which is the focal. So this focal circle over here does actually does not get affected by any of the effects. So generally you'd want to have that focal a circle a lot smaller because whatever is outside of the red circle is what's going to be affected by this brush. And then we've got this realistic setting. I've played around with it. I haven't noticed too much of a difference between 10 or even 1. And then the layer system comes in handy. Let's say if, you, if you've created a layer clone over or you've got multiple layers on your garment, you'd actually want to uh, specify how many layers your garment contains so that the brush affects all of those layers. So using this brush is very simple. You just simply click and drag and you'll be able to get rid of any of these folds. If you want to, you can also go to settings, user settings, and then you'll see that there's an option over here under view controls. If you change this to Wacom pen, uh, you'll actually be able to use some of the pressure sensitivity from your pen tablet uh, whenever you, you know, using these brushes, uh, which I think is a pretty cool feature as well. So now if I go ahead and select wrinkle, it does exactly what it says. Let's increase the size over here. Make sure my focal is quite small. And you can see as I click and pull down like this with gravity, I'll actually start forming some additional wrinkles on the garment. So it's just a nice addition that they've added with Marvelous Designer. The fact that I can actually remove wrinkles or I can add in additional wrinkles very easily using these brushes. So would these brushes replace ZBrush for me personally? Uh, if I have to be honest, no. I think it is a nice inclusion, but I think that ZBrush is better and just gives me a lot more options. But if you're using Marvelous Designer and you don't have access to ZBrush, it's nice that w once you're done with your garment, you'll be able to use these brushes to either add those wrinkles or remove them. Right, so if I go back to simulation, and this is why I said you only do this at the end, if by accident, I click on simulate. All of this hard work that I've, uh, that I've included over here with these wrinkles is going to disappear because now I'm telling the program that it needs to simulate this garment. So you can see all of those wrinkles are now gone. So this is something you don't want to do. You'll only use this feature uh, if you've got a static garment and you're done with it and you want to add some additional wrinkles. So I did mention layers earlier. And just to show you how that works, if I select this entire garment and I select uh, layer clone over, so this is basically doubling my fabric. It's a nice way to make fabric a lot thicker as well. But let's say you have additional layers uh, with your garment. This is how you want to set this up if you're using those brushes. So now I've got two layers. So this bottom layer over here, remember I said layer clone over. So this is on top of this layer. I want to make sure I'm changing my layer order over here because it's still on zero. I want to make sure this is on one. So I'm telling the program that this garment is on top of layer zero. So this one's labeled layer zero. So now if I go back to the sculpt workspace, okay, and you'll see if I keep this layer order over here on one and I start trying to add wrinkles, it's only going to add those wrinkles onto the top layer. So I need to specify that this needs to be on two because we have two layers on our garment and now it'll add those wrinkles and while, while respecting both layers. So that's how you use the new wrinkle and release brushes in Marvelous Designer 10. So for those of you that use the Marvelous Designer avatars, they've actually created a new avatar. So if you go to library, double click on avatar, you'll see that there's a new character under the stylized fold over here. And this character is called Hannah. So I'm gonna double click to load in Hannah. And Hannah has a whole lot of uh, other features over here. So we can choose a different pose, like we can put in the A pose, uh, there's even some motion files. We can change Hannah's shoes and even the type of hair uh, that's on the character. So there we go. We've got a more stylized character that you can use as one of your default avatars within Marvelous Designer 10. 
In Marvelous Designer 10, we can finally adjust the avatar size. So if you go to library, go to avatar, this feature only works with the Marvelous Designer avatars, but you can also do it with an OBJ, but we won't have access to some of the features. But I want to show you how this works with the Marvelous Designer avatars. So if you go to the avatar folder over here, just double click. I'm going to use the male version 2. So I'll double click to go into that folder and I want to double click to load this avatar into my scene. So my avatar is loaded and I'm actually just going to go ahead and hide the garment. So now we want to go to avatar and avatar editor. So now in the avatar editor with the default Marvelous Designer avatars, we've got access to a whole lot of features over here. You won't have access to this with an OBJ. You'll only see this with the Marvelous Designer uh, pre-installed avatars. But you can see a lot of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. We just need to adjust these values. So if I want to make this character a lot shorter, I can type maybe 1700, press enter, and you can see I've made our character shorter. And you'll see that there's a lot of these dotted lines on the character. So if I want to select a very specific region, I just have to be quite precise with the way I select it. So there we go. You can see it selected the bicep. And now if I increase this value, let's maybe say 400. So this avatar has been working out. You can see that it made his biceps a lot larger. And you can play around with these different settings to create your own custom avatar, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, let's say you want these settings to be applied onto this male character again. If you click on save, just save this to a folder or to your desktop. You've now saved the avatar settings. And now if I go ahead and load this avatar again, so this is the default avatar at the default height. All I have to do is go to avatar, avatar editor, click on this icon to load, and there's the .avs file, so I'll click on open, and there we go, it's loaded the shorter version of this character with all of those custom uh, settings that we have applied. So there we go, this is how you use the avatar editor for the default pre-installed avatars that come with Marvelous Designer 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and import our own custom OBJ, so using your own custom character, so import OBJ, and I'm using a Genesis 3 mail from Daz. And I'm going to import this. I don't want arrangement points. I'm going to auto scale this. Click on OK. And to scale your avatar or your OBJ within MD is super simple. Just left click within the 3D windows to select your avatar. You get this gizmo that pops up. Now my gizmo is on local coordinate. And over here you'll see that there's a new icon on the gizmo which is this icon over here. So if I select that, it brings up this box. So now if I click and drag diagonally, I can go ahead and scale this and make my character smaller or bigger. It's small quality of life improvements. You could not do this before, but now you can actually scale uh, the avatar within your scene. And you can see I can also scale it on the X, Y, and Z axis if I really need to do that. But now you can scale your OBJs directly within Marvelous Designer. So there have been some improvements made to the UV editor section as well. So if I go to UV editor, you'll see that we've got an icon over here that can basically isolate individual maps. So in this case, if I go to library and I'm using one of these SPSAR files, I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my fabric here quickly. I can now go ahead and isolate individual maps. So if I just want uh, either the, let's see what we have here. We've got the normal map, the roughness and metallicness, opacity. Uh, I can now isolate that just to see what it looks like directly within the UV editor. So what they've done with the UV editor now, and you could do this in a version 9.5. If you right click, you can reset UV to 2D arrangement. So it lays out your UVs exactly the way it looks within the 2D workspace. All right, and you could also do this in 9.5. You could fit all the UVs to 0, 1. So it basically packs all of those UVs into one tile. But now you can select individual pieces, right click, and you can click on fit UV to 0, 1. So it automatically scales it up and fits it into an individual tile. Then I can maybe move this into its own individual tile. So this is a great way to create UDIMs as well. But just the fact that you can select individual pieces and I'll fit the UV to 0, 1. I think is a nice time saver as well. Again, small improvements, small quality of life improvements, uh, but they do make a, a difference, especially when we're using the UV editor. So another feature they added to the UV editor is the fact that you can actually modify the position of the texture based on the location of the UV map by changing the setting of the texture to unified map. So if I go to library and we just load in one of these 
uh, SBSAR files from Substance Source. Now I did cover this in the video, how to create this folder and set it up with the Substance integration. I'm just going to drag and drop it over there. So now if I go to, if I change this from repeat to unified map and we go to the UV editor, you can see that I'm just going to right click reset 2D arrangement and I'm going to select all of these and fit UV to 0, 1. So depending on the overall uh, location of this UV map, it's going to change the way that this texture is actually laid out. So for whatever reason, if I try, if I actually rotate this, let's see, wait, that's the back. Let me select the front. If I start rotating this, you'll see that we get a different layout or style of the pattern. So you can use this strategically, especially maybe you wanted your pattern to look like this, uh, then you'll know exactly how to lay out uh, the different patterns within the workspace. Now, of course, I can change to, because it's currently on roughness map, I can maybe change to base color. So I can just see exactly what's happening here. I can right click, fit UV to zero, 01. And let's maybe put this in its own UV tile. But again, we can now change uh, the overall location of our texture directly within the UV editor like this and we get a real-time preview of how this material would look depending on how uh, this UV is being rotated and placed. So in MD10, they've also improved the tablet compatibility. Now, I personally don't use a Wacom pen or a tablet within Marvelous Designer. I just don't see the point of it. I feel like a mouse and keyboard does the job perfectly fine for me. But if you're the type of person who wants to use the Wacom pen, if you go to settings and user settings, right, and we go to the view controls, here by preset, you can actually select Wacom pen or the XP pen as well. Well, you'll see by default that you'll actually have to change some of these settings. So depending on how you set up your Wacom uh, settings for your Wacom pen, you can go ahead and assign that. I know on my Wacom pen, I can use control for pen. So there we go, I just select control. And if I close this, and now if I pick up my Wacom pen and I hold on control over here in the 3D workspace, I can now start panning around. So if you're the type of person that wants to use a Wacom pen, you now have some improved tablet compatibility, but definitely check out Marvelous Designer's video uh, to see how uh, they basically set up uh, additional settings for these uh, tablets and these pens if it's something you want to use for navigation. So another feature that's been added in MD10 is the auto fit feature. So this allows you to fit garments from a different character onto another character that's got different proportions. And the new icons that have been added in MD10, if I go to MD10, is these two new icons over here. And this is one of the main icons, which is a fitting suit. So if you bring in a character, you click on fitting suit and you create all of these measurements. Now I am scrolling through the MD video uh, for this entire feature. So you create all of these measurements for different parts of the body and you'd actually go ahead, click on apply and it creates like this measurement suit that gets applied onto that custom character. And you can actually go ahead and save this and it gets saved as an avatar. And then whenever you bring in a new garment, uh, you'd basically uh, bring that in as a project file and append it as uh, you basically add the garment as a project file without the avatar and then you'll be able to click on this icon over here which is auto fit now the reason why i'm not going to be covering this in the video is because this feature has been a complete miss for me i haven't had a good time with this feature uh, even when I tried using it and tried to do auto fitting, the garments would intersect with my character. But lately, the feature has been crashing my Marvelous Designer entirely. So I can no longer use this auto fitting feature within Marvelous Designer 10. The program always crashes. Uh, there's a lot of instability. And it's really a shame because I feel like it's such a cool inclusion with Marvelous Designer 10. But for me personally, I just haven't had a good time with it and I haven't been able to test it properly. But go ahead, check out Marvelous Designer's video on their YouTube channel. They'll show you exactly how to use auto fitting. If this works for you, fantastic. Uh, but for me personally, I haven't got it to work correctly. Uh, but I still think it could be a really awesome game changing feature for fitting garments onto different characters. So something else I want to mention, if I go to file and you guys are working with open Collada, there seems to be an issue with Marvelous Designer 10. So I'm going to go ahead and open this 
and you can see I've got open avatar auto scale I don't need arrangement points I'll click on OK so in marvelous designer 10 it seems like the open collider import settings are completely broken because now it's imported my character but if I go to animation and on the timeline over here if I start trying to click around there's no animation data that's been imported at all. And this is working perfectly fine in Marvelous Designer 9.5. But you can see in MD10, there's no animation data. This character is supposed to go from a T pose to an A pose. So the only fix for this right now is to actually import your character into MD9.5, save that out as a project file, and open that project file in MD10 so that you have that animation data. So they really need to go ahead and fix this because I know a lot of people that use Open Collada. In MD10, if you are not seeing all of these icons, all you have to do is go to Settings, User Settings, right, and you want to go to User Interface, and this icon over here, or this option called Group Tools, by default that's selected as On, and you can see if I put that on, it groups all of these icons into a drop-down menu. Now maybe you like that. Uh, but for me personally, I'm so used to seeing all of those icons over here that I've gone ahead and I actually disabled that under the user interface. Just makes it a lot easier, uh, easier to access everything. All right, and if you guys use Skin Offset, uh, they've basically changed the way you use Skin Offset. Before you could go to Scene and you could just select like the OBJ of your character. And yeah, under the Property Editor, under Surface, you'll be able to see Skin Offset. But you'll notice right now there's nothing that's that you'll be able to select. So to be able to see skin offset on your avatar you want to right click on your avatar and select select all faces and now on the right hand side you can see I've got a skin offset and skin offset works uh, or comes really in handy uh, to determine uh, how much of the garment is actually offset from this character. So you can see if I put this on a value of 5 and I press simulate just watch uh, how much further this garment is going to be pushed away from the character. You can see that space is a lot larger. So they've just changed the way you access Skin Offset and this is how you access it now just by right clicking and selecting Select All Faces and then you'll gain access to the Skin Offset option. So something new that's been added in MD10 is that we now have these icons in the 2D window. So especially with these numbers, these are line length uh, measurements. Usually you would right click and go to show line length but now you have to click on these icons and you can see if I go to the 2D information here is the show line length option. So there's a lot of other additional features over here like we can actually see uh, what the mesh looks like now within the 2D window uh, which is pretty cool. So this is a nice inclusion that's been added to the 2D workspace. You'll notice in the 3D window that there's a new icon over here which is this quality render which is fantastic. If I click on this I get a much better visual representation of my garment. Uh, I'm assuming that this is some ambient occlusion that's being used over here to create these shadows on our garment. But you can see this looks way better. Now this is something you don't want to use all the time, especially while you're simulating because it can be quite intensive on your resources and your RAM. So you'll just activate that briefly just to see what your garment looks like uh, with a better high quality render. Now I'm really hoping uh, that with future versions of MD that they'll actually include you know, an actual render engine in the program like Octane Render or something so that we can render our garments directly within Marvelous Designer instead of having to leave the program. But this is a nice alternative for now. You get a nice uh, preview. So it's this icon over here which is the quality render. Okay, so keep in mind that they have added in a bunch of other features as well. I'm not going to be covering everything or else this video would be way too long. Uh, but head on over to the link that I've supplied in the, in the description in the top comment. You can see over here by other features that they've added a list of uh, other improvements into Marvelous Designer 10 as well. I just wanted to cover the main key features in this video. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Let me know what you think about the new features in MD10. My personal favorite has to be the substance integration. I think it's really cool that we can bring SBSAR files di directly into Marvelous Designer now. And I really like this uh, quality render viewer within Marvelous Designer. But there's definitely some instability. Features that were working previously are no longer working. I can't get AutoFit into work correctly. So we definitely need a patch. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Marvelous Designer going forward. But it's still cool if you guys want to upgrade, maybe consider it. If you want something that's maybe a little bit more stable, maybe stick with 9.5. Uh, but there is definitely some awesome features in uh, MD10 that I would say uh, would warrant an upgrade. 
anyway i hope this video has been useful thank you as always for the support on this channel i truly appreciate it stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye